Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. North Korea just spelled war with this unprecedented move. North Korea has reportedly been conducting evacuation drills in secondary and tertiary cities and towns all throughout the last week, according to Daily Mail. The drills are likely a preparation tactic in anticipation of war, sources say. I have never heard of this type of training exercises before in North Korea, but am not surprised, Hunt and Bum, a former South Korean military officer, said. They must realize how serious the situation is. Sources say drills of this nature haven't occurred since air raid drills were carried out in 2003. The reports were revealed not long after Defense Secretary James Mattis spoke in Seoul, the capital of South Korea, over the weekend. Make no mistake, any attack on the United States or our allies will be defeated, and any use of nuclear weapons by the North will be met with a massive military response that is effective and overwhelming, he said. Mattis went on to say that Kim Jong-un is at fault for knowingly breaking international laws and facilitating unneeded missile and nuclear weapons programs. I cannot imagine a condition under which the United States would accept North Korea as a nuclear power, Mattis said during the conference. Time will tell what comes of this conflict. Kim Jong-un has continuously pushed the envelope with missile tests and other triggering military actions in the North but no official moves of war have been made yet by either side. Scores of people blame President Trump for escalating the situation in various ways, such as calling the hostile dictator Rocket Man on Twitter, for example, but reality is also that Kim has always been a threat and has used the possibility of nuclear capabilities as leverage with the United States for years. Shocking FBI report links far-left anarchists and ISIS in plot to destroy Trump. Wow! This is a shocker. A bombshell. A total game-changer. Best-selling author Ed Klein just blew the whistle on what the FBI is calling the greatest challenge to law enforcement since the Weather Underground and the Black Panther Party. According to the Daily Mail, the FBI had a top-secret investigation into far-left resistance movements across the USA with a focus on college campuses. And they found stunning collusion between far-left American anarchists and ISIS and Al-Qaeda. There is clearly overwhelming evidence that there are growing ties between U.S. radicals and the Islamic State, as well as several, ISIS, offshoots and splinter groups, said the FBI field report which will be published for the first time in Klein's new book. All at War, The Plot to Destroy Trump. According to Klein, the FBI monitored the far left as they traveled to Hamburg to protest Trump and the rest of the world's leaders at the G20 summit. Task Force covered G20 meeting in Hamburg, studied intel from local authorities, Interpol, and other assets, determined that as assumed U.S.-backed anarchist, radical groups had traveled to Germany and took place in the violence, the FBI's report said before adding the bombshell. There is also evidence of meetings between these individuals and associates of ISIS. There is an urgent need to closely surveil the identified individuals. The report goes in to say that the far-left anarchists met with multiple terror organizations in Germany and allege that one man even traveled to Syria to discuss tactics with ISIS. The report makes clear that these far-left groups want to commit violence and are gearing up for more. Proving Trump right again. Share this if you agree. Right after first charges filed in Russia probe, Trump lawyer slapped Mueller down and set the record straight. It's been another crazy week in Washington, folks. The Trump Russia collusion investigation is finally heating up with CNN reporting that special counsel Robert Mueller has filed his first charges. The report did not say who was being charged or what the charges were, but as usual, speculation abounded about those in President Trump's inner circle, 
particularly former campaign chairman Paul Manafort and former National Security Advisor Mike Flynn. President Trump's attorney Ty Cobb has one message for those who think the president or his colleagues are the ones who will be going down, it's not happening. The president has no concerns in terms of any impact, as to what happens to them, on his campaign or on the White House. Cobb stated that documents given to Mueller by the White House showed no evidence of any collusion with Russia and reiterated that the president was fully cooperating with the investigation and expects a positive result. I think the path that he chose of trying to minimize conflict and maximize cooperation is one that benefits the country as he tries to erase this cloud. Which I think he will ultimately achieve. Valp, there you have it, folks. Mueller's charges could result in an arrest as early as Monday but President Trump remains confident that he and his team will come out unscathed. Share it out if you think Mueller's probe is a scam. HT New York Times Woody Harrelson has dinner with Trump, gets up from the table to do something totally insane. Actor Woody Harrelson reportedly left a dinner with President Trump to go outside and smoke marijuana, according to the Washington Examiner. The Hollywood liberal apparently became so unhinged during the meal that he needed to go outside for a joint. Harrelson said as much to fellow Moonbit Bill Maher during an appearance on his show, Real Time with Bill Maher. Check it out. It was brutal. It was brutal, Harrelson said. I never met a more narcissistic man. He talked about himself the whole time, I had to walk out, like, halfway through to smoke a joint just to like, steal myself for the rest of it. He said he attended the dinner with former governor of Minnesota Jesse Ventura, whom Trump was apparently considering as a running mate for a 2004 Democratic presidential ticket. Earlier this year, Harrelson commented that he wants Trump to surprise him with just one positive thing. Personally. I love when Hollywood celebrities say stuff like that, because it reveals they don't actually have any idea what's going on in this country. Consider, for example, that the U.S. economy grew at a 3% rate this last quarter. Or that around the same time Harrelson made his comments, unemployment in the U.S. fell to a 28-year low under Trump. But, you know, details or whatever. Just an anti-flag protesting player arrested for violent crime against woman. The anti-flag protesting players continue to disgrace and they are spreading their garbage like a virus. But watch out because the virus is sick and will take down a man and lead him to ruin. The NFL is awash with wife beaters and other felons and that we know. When one baseball player, Oakland A's catcher Bruce Maxwell, became the only MLB baseball player to take a knee during the anthem it was a national disgrace and fears that it would spread to baseball and basketball were valid. But the NBA ended that idea with a rule saying all players must stand and the MLB got tough and Maxwell became an isolated outbreak of the Kaepernick virus. And malcontents, like Maxwell, always get their just deserts. According to a shocking new report from TMZ, that is just what happened. Oakland A's catcher Bruce Maxwell was arrested last night for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after cops allege he pulled a gun on a woman. Scottsdale police said Maxwell was arrested Saturday at 6.08 p.m. at his Scottsdale, Arizona home. Check this out, the woman was simply delivering food to this malcontent, did not know him at all, and he pulled a gun on her. Cops have not released the reason this malcontent committed a felony but with these spoiled athletes getting away with anything it was probably something simple like the clown's food was cold. Point is I don't know anyone who would point a gun at a delivery driver. And this is not an isolated incident, for anyone who would do that is a bad guy who has done bad stuff before and just never got caught. The police booked Maxwell on charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and disorderly conduct. He should switch and go play in the NFL, don't you think?
This footballer was sick of flag disrespect, so he got with veterans to do the incredible. The National Football League has been rocked by scandal this season as dozens of players on multiple teams have protested by kneeling during the national anthem. While the players claim they are practicing their First Amendment rights, the president and others have argued that this move disrespects a national symbol and veterans who fought and died for our country. One former player has had enough of the protest and decided to do combat them with positivity and patriotism. Former St. Louis Rams player David Vobaura launched the Dear Flag campaign, working with veterans and football players to record what the flag means to them. Vobaura went on Fox and Friends to describe his project and his work with veteran advocacy organization the Adaptive Training Foundation, and the importance of building bridges in these divisive times. For me, look, I will stand, and I will put my hand over my heart. I will pay tribute. You don't build a bridge to meet in the middle. You build a bridge to go to the other person's side, to check it out. You may not like it, but then you go back to your side and you have, a little bit of perspective, he said. Through that maybe we can be humane to humanity. What an incredible initiative, and it's not going to end there Vobara is hoping that youth can get involved in the concept and write in their own feelings about what the flag means to them. It's good to know there are still some patriots working to bring a voice to veterans and defend our flag and anthem. Share this out to spread the word about this awesome patriotic campaign. H.T. Fox News